Sea. Sea uh, no, as uh, standing in the middle of the North Sea, the Brent Field has been a cornerstone of the UK's oil and gas production for over four decades. Now one of the field's four iconic platforms has been decommissioned at Breakfast John Maguire's live at its final resting place at the Abel Seaton Port in Hartlepool. Morning, John. What a day. Look at that. Yeah, it is an amazing day, isn't it? What an amazing view. Uh, we're cheating a little bit this morning, if I'm perfectly honest, because that's not the rig. But we wanted to show you that just to give you an idea of the scale. That one's probably around 14,000 tonnes. Brent Delta, uh, 24,000. So about 50% bigger than that one. It will come in on the high tide tonight, being brought in on a huge barge called the Iron Lady, which, funnily enough, will turn 90 degrees. It'll then sail up the water here to arrive at that new piece of concrete there, that new key that's been built specifically to handle the salvage part, the death, as you say, of Brent Delta. It's been an extraordinary few days of engineering, and so far so good, things have gone pretty well. A decade in the planning, but just seconds in the execution, as the top side, as it's known, is lifted off Brent Delta and on to the world's largest construction ship. The pioneering spirit was designed and built exactly for mammoth tasks such as this. 380 meters long and 124 meters wide across two hulls, it's the size of an Olympics worth of sports pitches and double-decker buses. Speaking to the BBC before the world record lift, the ship's captain says his is a dream job. This is one of the dreams if you're a captain and be a captain of the biggest ship. This is the biggest you can get in the world at the moment. The Brent oil field, more than 100 miles northeast of the Shetlands, has been producing oil since the 1970s. During its peak, half a million barrels a day. Now the oil field is coming to the end of its economic life, and these monoliths are being decommissioned. Itself a massive job. The Northern North Sea in particular is a very harsh, hostile environment. The platforms under that are very big and very, very large integrated platforms. Uh, they're much bigger typically than what you find in the Southern North Sea or many of the other shallow basins around the world. So the, the as a consequence of that, the platforms are bigger and heavier and more difficult to decommission. It's a process that will be worth at least £40 billion pounds in the years ahead, but is not without challenges. Shell, which operates the oil field, says it learned lessons from the furore surrounding the scrapping of the Brent Spa storage facility in the 1990s. Delta's three concrete legs will remain in place, as the company believes moving them would be dangerous and too expensive. And the coming years will see more than a hundred platforms decommissioned, as these giants of the once so vital Brent oil field are brought ashore to die. And the estimate is that they will manage to salvage, recycle 98.5% of the topside, which uh, seems extraordinary, but that's the type of thing that they specialise here at Abel in Hartley. Well, let's talk to Duncan Manning from Shell. Uh, Duncan, how's it gone the last few days? How would you characterise what's been achieved? Well, this is a culmination of five years of planning and preparation to successfully lift the Brent Delta and transport it on the pioneering spirit, bring it down to here just up off, uh, off Hartlepool to then load it as it was about three hours ago onto the part, onto the, the Iron Lady barge where it will be transported here into Abel's port to, uh, to, to conduct that recycling phase, as you said. And that happened at, what, three o'clock this morning, so, yeah. so and that we, we assume has gone well. And I know that people could see the platform off the coast here, but the legs will stay in position in the North Sea. Is that a good idea? Well, that's our plan. That's uh, after 10 years of study, looking at the, the various engineering options to, to refloat these gravity-based structures. Just to put these into context, these are, whilst the Brent Delta top side is 24,000 tonnes, these gravity-based structures on, on which they sit are nearly 300,000 tonnes, so enormous structures. And we did look at the options to both uh, to refloat and, and, and to remove them, but the engineering complexity, the cost and the safety impact of doing that is absolutely enormous. So we think that on balance, leaving the gravity based structures in place with the legs up is the right thing to do. I've got three other platforms. I think one of them's still producing. Is it Charlie still, still producing? Charlie's still producing. 
But the plan, of course, is to decommission those. Where are we with, with permissions and with the plans to do those? Because, of course, all of this sort of thing is, is strictly and tightly controlled. Correct. We sit in a very robust regulatory regime in the UK. We've just completed a 60-day public consultation, um, and we're in the, the process of uh, taking those comments on board from our uh, stakeholders and from members of the public who've had the opportunity to read what we propose, and we're in the process of, of responding to those comments. Once we've finished that, we'll then move on to the next phase, which is applying to the uh, Oslo Paris Convention, for which we are signatories to, uh, to seek a derogation to leave those gravity-based structures in place. So that's what you do with the other three. And when, when will all four be gone? Well, this is a multi-year operation. As you said, Brent Charlie is still producing or continues to produce for a few years yet. The focus at the moment, whilst it is offshore and with Brent Delta, we're not, uh, we're not forgetting that on Brent Alpha, they're in the, uh, the middle of a, uh, a, a phase where we're isolating the reservoir from the surface. And on Brent Bravo, we're preparing that platform for lift. So whilst the focus is very much here on the lift and the, the move into uh, to Able's port for Brent Delta, we're certainly not, not forgetting that there's, there's offshore operations conducting right now on the other three platforms. Okay, Dr. Manning, thank you very much indeed. So still lots of work to be done, lots of money to be spent, many years of work ahead. I should tell you actually, just before we head back, we had a couple of little seals that came to visit us this morning, which was a nice sight. But in terms of the sort of the man-made, the huge engineering, uh, that's been a sight for many local people here in Hartlepool and will continue to be so certainly for the rest of today and it sounds for months and years to come back to you oh john thank you very much it's fascinating to see that and what a beautiful day to be out and about yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. do some live scenes